look who's talking. Today we're talking about personal hygiene and personal hygiene is all about cleanliness and staying healthy. Australian hygiene standards are generally high and on the show today we discuss the importance of hygiene in our lives. You know our bodies have built-in systems of dealing with germs but of course they do need our help in keeping the germs away and that's what hygiene is all about. So let's find out how much everyone knows about hygiene. First of all something that struck me when I was thinking about it. So does anyone know how to spell hygiene? No, no, Andrew? Uh, H-Y-G-E-I-N-E. G-E-I-N-E. I think it's I, is any, hang on, wait, wait, wait till I come down. How do you think it's spelled? H-Y-G-I-E-N-E. Yeah, that's right, Anthony, but it's a bit tricky, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, what is hygiene? Um, I'm not sure, Papa. Um, it's, I'm not sure. Well, I guess the, the simple thing is it's keeping clean, it's really, isn't clean it? Keeping clean and washing your hands and keeping food, not putting the hot and cold food together. What's your, what are your thoughts on, on personal hygiene? I mean, how do you feel about the routine every day of having to get up, have a shower, you know, da-da-da, clean your teeth? Oh, when I first, oh, when you first get used to it, it's all right, but now, now I'm used to it, so I just do, keep doing it. So you don't think it's a bit of a nuisance? No. No? Okay, let's go up here to Anita. Personal hygiene is just like a routine now because yeah. you get used to it after the years. So what's the routine? Um, brushing your teeth twice a day and taking daily showers. Yeah. Do you think that if you don't do that it's not, it's bad news? Um, I not mean, if you forget it once but if you uh, don't do it ever. Has anyone ever done that old thing of when, when mum nags you to go and have a shower and you don't really don't feel like it of pretending that you're having a shower? The old fake shower? Yeah. Athena has. Well, I did that once when I was about three, but I, I just walked in and started to say, oh, mummy, I'm having a shower, thank you. Oh, now I'm probably out. So, yeah. <laughs> did she know? Yeah, I got <laughs> totally busted afterwards, so. How did she find out? She just walked in and saw me and I was just standing in my clothes saying, ah, I'm having a shower. <laughs> she said, sure, Athena, with your clothes on. <laughs> yeah. And you're completely dry. Has anyone else done that? Yeah, some of the, Andrew? Yeah, I just did my hair and that and just said I was on hair. I mean, having a shower, I just wet my hair. You wet your hair? Yeah, and they never found out. They didn't find out. Weren't you a bit smelly, though? Yeah, I <laughs> yeah. knew from everyone around me. I everyone around you was going, oh, Andrew. <laughs> yes, I started taking a shower. Then. What do you think's the best reason for staying clean? I don't know, so they don't smell me. I don't know. <laughs> Anyone else got any thoughts on this? Gregory? No. no. Have you ever had done the old fake shower routine? Yeah, I had a party last year and we all faked a shower. Oh, <laughs> what, a whole group of you? Yeah, about four, four of us. And what did you do? Just turn the water on and pretend? Splash around it? Did you get caught? No. No? <laughs> but were you smelly? Mm, no. My parents didn't come downstairs where we were having the sleepover. It, does, do you, have you ever thought about the connection between being dirty and germs? Or hasn't that, isn't that something that's really occurred to you very much? because there is a connection and our, our next guest can tell you all about it. Joining us today is Sandra Allen and she's a health advisor with the Department of Education. Now Sandra works closely with both teachers and students like you guys in the area of health and hygiene within the school environment. So welcome Sandra. Thanks for having me. Well Sandra, why is hygiene so important? Um, hygiene is all about preventing illness and disease and I think we all want to be healthy and to be free of disease and germs. But there's another side of hygiene is if we're um, hygienic, we're clean so we're a lot more pleasanter to be around and also um, we, can, we feel better about ourselves if we look good. Is Australia generally pretty good at hygiene? I know I said it was in the beginning mm -hmm. but we are. Yes, yes, that's probably correct. Um, probably due to things like sewerage, our, um, we've got high standards of things like garbage collection um, and we've got access to clean water. Yes, so generally in Australia it is. What do you think it would have been like in the old days before they had lots of running water and soap and things were really easy to keep yourselves clean? Who, Nathan? Is it Nathan or Jonathan? Nathan. Nathan? Um, I like keeping clean and, and having nice and clean hands and things like that and I wouldn't have liked not having clean water for baths and things like that. How about those ladies in the old days who used to have the hair all piled up and they used to get rats and things living in them? Oh, I think that would be disgusting. <laughs> I know. I think I vote for clean hair every time. Mm. We're talking about hygiene today on the show and we'll be back with more after the break. <laughs> Talk 
talking about hygiene. We were just talking about the old days a moment ago, about how it would feel. How does everybody think they'd like to live then without the standards of hygiene we have now? Yeah? Scott? Um, I think it'd be really disgusting living back then because you'd never be clean, you'd always be dirty and you'd be smelly and it'd be just disgusting. When did you first start becoming aware that it was better to be clean than it was to be dirty? I mean, when you're little, you sort of tend to don't mind a bit of dirt. Um, yeah, when I was about five, I stopped faking showers. <laughs> and do you, I mean, do you feel great after you have a shower and clean your teeth and do all that stuff? Yeah. Yeah? Okay. Let's go up here and talk to Wade. Um, I think it's, in the olden days, I think it would re be really bad because, like, It'd be really dirty and like um, all the people wouldn't want to come near you. I and know, I that'd be the worst thing, that your friends would just absolutely avoid you like the plague, wouldn't they? Anita? Um, I heard about in um, this queen, she, she never used to wash herself only every year, once a year. Once a year? What do you think about the idea of a shower once a year? <laughs> oh. What sort of problems could that cause in a community, Sandra, if people were only washing once a year? She certainly wouldn't find herself a king, would she, for a start? No. <laughs> but obviously, um, in the coming in contact with um, just the general people in daily life, she could obviously sp spread germs and, and disease. Um, and remember, germs like dirty conditions to uh, survive. And just through daily contact, you could be passing them on. Sarah? I think it would be really terrible because it'd just be so dirty and um, you really need to be clean and you'd just feel fresher. Yeah. Karen? Oh, Maren? Um, I really would hate to be to live like that because I feel better. I really can't imagine just not having showers every day. It'd just be horrible. I know, not being able to wash your hands and things like yeah. that. Tim? Um, it sort of... Sort of makes you sick just watching those sort of movies seeing where they're all dirty and um, rotting and living in horrible houses like that and just thinking how lucky you are to have showers and um, things like that. Yeah the old nice tiled shower floor and everything. Lisa? Um, it makes you feel really uncomfortable knowing that you haven't had a shower and as Tim said you feel lucky that we have these kind of facilities. Yeah that we can do that. Has anyone ever been camping for a few days and not been able to have a shower? What's that like Mark? Um it's pretty hard doing it um, especially with when you're out camping you always tend to get dirty pretty easily <laughs> and you're always like having fun and out there when you're camping you can't really have fun without getting dirty. So when you come home you're an absolute horror? Yeah. <laughs> Mother like screams. If your mother screams yeah. <laughs> and throws you straight in the shower. Andrew? Um, well I'm in scouts and when you go on a camp it's um, really um, dirty and you have to get like a cup and put some water in, you have to clean yourself in the cup and have a massive shower when you get back. You home. clean yourself from a cup? Mm. Boy, how clean do you reckon Andrew would be cleaning himself from a cup? Oh. Whoa, very, very, not too good. I don't think I'd be inviting you over for afternoon tea, Andrew. Sonia? Um, you were talking before about ways that you keep clean without soap. Oh yeah, the, back in the old days they used to use bicarbonate soda instead of toothpaste. So they'd clean their teeth with bicarbonate soda? Yes. Mmm! Actually, it's not such a bad idea. I've actually tried it because it gets all the gungy bits off. Has anyone ever tried it? No? You have. What do you think about it? It tastes awful. <laughs> I know, it tastes really vile. But it's a good trick for keeping your teeth clean. Anita? I think it's also important to keep... One of the main aspects of hygiene is the country's hospitals. Country hospitals? Yeah, because I mean, me and Sonia went over to Thailand and we had to be careful that we didn't get sick because we didn't want to go into their hospitals. Because you'd, you were worried about the standard of hygiene. Yeah. In, well, that's another thing. I mean, the standard of hygiene in a country, uh, in hospitals, in schools, in places like that. Amy? I think that um, if you haven't had a shower, you feel really awful. So I think if you have a shower, I think it makes you feel better as well. Yeah. So, Sandra, when you go out to schools and you talk to uh, the kids and the students about hygiene, I mean, are you talking about the fact that you have to have a shower every day? What are some of the other things that you bring in? Things like, such as personal hygiene, which incorporates things like keeping your fingernails um, cut short so that you don't spread germs. Looking at ways that when you mix with groups of people, you can be hygienic to control the spread of, of germs. 
um, looking at ways, just simple ways within a playground that, that uh, you can try and reduce the risk of spreading things. Andrew? Um, should you wa wash your hands with hot water or cold water after like petting pets or going to the toilet? Yeah, well what should you do, Sandra? With soap. It could probably warm water, something that's comfortable. Um, cold water if that's all that is available and be sure to use some soap. Does everybody do that? Do you all wash your do you wash your hands every time you pat an animal or do anything like that? Uh, yeah. Every time you've been to the Lalu, do you wash your hands? Yeah. Yeah? Oh, you're all really good. You get twenty five brownie points. Gerard? Um, I'd like to ask Sandra a question. I'd like to know how fast do germs actually travel from person to person? It depends on the way that the germs are, are spread. For example, uh, some germs are spread through droplet infection. So when you sneeze, it's as, as fast as your, uh, your breath can travel to the next person. Some germs is simply travel through your hands and through touch. So obviously it depends on the way that it's being carried to the, to the next person. It depends on, on the speed. And we'll be talking more on that subject in just a moment. is our subject today and uh, I think we we're going to start with Todd. Um, what are some of the diseases you could get say you patted a pet or something and then you like you put your hands in your mouth or something can what are the diseases you could get from that? It obviously depends on where the pet's been but one that's probably that many of you might have come in contact with the things like worms which aren't that that friendly or that comfortable to have. Okay any other diseases that can be transferred if you're not careful about washing your hands? Uh, just general things through not through touch, things like uh, measles or rubella can be spread through your hands, or just the common cold. If we care for, if we don't wash our hands, can be spread through contact and, and touching. Did you know that, Todd? No. Wow. Does it give you a good reason to wash your hands more often? Yeah. How often do you wash your hands as it is? Uh, for meals mainly, and before I eat things. I guess yeah. it's not really something you, you concentrate on much during the day, is it? No, not really. Okay. Uh, Athena. Sandra, are there any killing bacteria that can be transmitted through fingernails and things like that? Uh, through, yes, there are. There are uh, bacteria and viruses and things that can be transmitted. Um, not so much today, but particularly in the olden days before they had immunisation, before they had a lot of the control mechanisms. Things like, um, it was quite common for people to die, you know, from things like, like chicken pox and... Um, some of those types of viruses, tuberculosis, which can be, be spread through, through contact and, and through the air. Adam? Um, can bad bacteria cause food poisoning? It can, certainly. Yep, if it's contained in the food and if the food isn't prepared hygienically and um, if you don't take the right precautions when you're using food, certainly it can. Yep. What are some of the precautions that they have to take in school canteens to make sure that they don't have any problems like that with food? Okay, making sure the... Uh, the kitchen, where you're washing and using the kitchen utensils, that things are clean. Checking that the food is used by its use by date, that it isn't out of date. And just generally making sure that hands are washed and, and that things are clean. Michael? Um, to, um, they've got to clean the breadboards so then they can't, so they don't eat the back. Bacteria off the, is that important? Is a breadboard something you have to, does it soak up germs and stuff? Yes, yeah, anything that's moist, germs love. Okay. Luke. Um, why has personal hygiene become more important over the years? Um, probably because we're more aware uh, than, than maybe in past years of, uh, and we know a lot more about the types of illnesses and diseases that we can spread. So it's probably uh, that we're more informed and we, we're probably more conscious of our own health and hygiene's connected with health. Carly. Um, does mould um, carry bacteria or give bacteria off into food? It can, yes. Anything that's nice and, and moist and obviously mould and, and fungi and things like a, a moist environment to grow. So yes. Is okay. your fridge one of those ones that has the old bit of mouldy cheese in? Um, no. <laughs> mine is. No. I found a terrible bit of mouldy cheese in mine the other day. You should throw those out, shouldn't you? Can you just chop the mould off and still eat it? Or? Yes, yes. You, you can? can. Yeah. Okay. Wade? Um, I'd just like to know um, how commonly um, spread is head lice in schools? How 
widely spread is head lice in schools? Generally schools go through different phases where they can have um, lots and lots of people because as you know if one person has head lice it's, it's pretty quick, uh, it doesn't take long for it to spread throughout a classroom and if it becomes difficult to control then if one person washes their hair and, and you don't catch everybody so it depends, generally it depends on, on who's got them within the school. Well we have actually taken our cameras out to another school and this is their views on hygiene. I think hygiene is important for your personal appearance so that you don't have a body odour and you don't get greasy hair. I think hygiene is important so when you cut your knee or your arm it doesn't get infected. We think hygiene is important to prevent bad breath. Nicely washed clean clothes are important for personal hygiene. I think, I think hygiene is good for your face because you don't get so many pimples. Hygiene is great because it prevents bacteria from entering your body. I think dental hygiene is good because they're showing your teeth. It prevents decay and their flossing is also good for them too. To prevent head lice, you should always keep your hair nice and clean. Hygiene is not only keeping yourself clean, it's keeping where you live clean as well. Thanks to Ithaca School and we'll be back with more on hygiene after this break. <laughs> talking about hygiene today and let's start off with Louisa. Um, what are the checks that the school health... Um, what, what sort of things do they do to make sure yeah. schools are clean? Yeah, hygienic. Who, Louisa? Um, the school health department. What sort of, how do they make sure that schools are hygienic places, Sandra? Uh, that's generally left up to the principal and the teachers within the school to, uh, to keep checks on. It's also up to the students who are there to keep the environment clean and healthy. Anthony? Um, I just think it's fairly surprising that people um, fake showers and sort of abuse the, the use of showers and things because people in third world countries don't really have that opportunity to be free from diseases and things. How difficult do you think it would be for someone, say, who'd grown up in a country like that, um, to take that person and actually educate them about hygiene? How would you um, go about it? I'm not sure, really. What would you tell them about the reasons for showers? and? Oh, well, I'd tell them what could happen if they didn't like what bacteria could breed and... Yeah, um, like what happens if you don't clean your teeth? Yeah, teeth decay. Yeah, no more teeth <laughs> and a very strange smile. Andrew? I've got a question for Sandra. Um, I've heard that a simple cold or flu can like make Aboriginals very, very sick. Is that true? Um, it is true to say that some Aboriginals within our population have poor uh, hygiene standards because they don't have access to some of those things that we've been talking about and when your immunity or when your if your hygiene standards are low that can increase your chance of, of um, not being able to maybe your body's not fit enough to deal with some some diseases and germs so yes in some cases that can be be true. Julia? Um, I know someone and she'll chew chewing gum and then we'll leave it and chew it again in two weeks time Oh no. What do we think about that? What do you think about that? Um, she probably gets sick. Well, can she get sick doing that? She can. Imagine the flies and things that may have crawled across it and the other uh, insects and things that have been around that carry uh, germs and things on their feet. Mm, Michael? Uh, I've got a question for Sandra. In a third world country, if um, a child never ever brushed his teeth or anything, because like he didn't have the equipment, um, um, would like his teeth just totally deteriorate if he didn't have them removed, like disappear? It depends. You can see obviously um, within some of the children in, in the, the other countries you can see that their teeth aren't properly formed. So their teeth are very brittle, it's very easy to break them and also they don't, they're, they're not formed. So some of them are, are quite stumpy and, and irregular. Mm -hmm. Lisa? I've got a question for Sandra. Why do you think um, some countries have such poor hygienic standards? Often hygiene is associated with wealth and they don't have the money. It costs a lot of money to, to provide access to things like, you know, uh, garbage collection and sewerage. So it's heavily tied up with that. Tim? Um, when, I, when I pat my cats, I usually don't wash my hands afterwards. And after a while, I, I just got the habit of doing it. And, and um, uh, 
this ringworm started coming onto my hand and it started from the cat and so I just realised how bad it was get, just not washing hands, little things like that so, so I, you, I started washing my hands. Yeah really, you had to learn by getting something wrong though first. Yeah. Okay. Zoe. How many germs would you be able to wash off in a shower? Wow, probably millions. <laughs> <laughs> lots and lots. Zoe? It, it's a funny thought, isn't it? Mm -hmm. All those waving goodbye to all those, see you later guys, as you go down the plug hole. <laughs> Are you very, do you like having your showers and keeping clean? I like keeping clean. But you're not mad about showers. <laughs> okay. The thing about germs is you can't see them, can you? So you don't really know. Rebecca? Does all bacteria come off your hands when you wash them? It depends how well you wash them and making sure that you clean underneath your nails is really important so that you can get the ones that may be hiding in, in crevices. Hmm, what a thought, all those germs hiding in little crevices. Although our bodies do have natural inbuilt systems to deal with germs and illness, we can help our body's defences by simply being aware of the basic hygiene rules and of course using them. No more fake showers, okay? Hygiene is important to our well-being and with a little care from you, a healthy life can be yours. If you've got any comments or subjects that you'd like us to talk about on Look Who's Talking, we'd love to hear from you. And uh, grab a pen, write down our address. It's Look Who's Talking, Post Office Box 304, Gordon, New South Wales, 2072. And I look forward to hearing from you. I would like to thank our guest, Sandra Allen, today, and our audience from Craigslie Primary School. Thanks, everyone, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>